There have been many versions of capitalisms, and the current iteration we're in is generally sort of a, 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 the, the Friedman uh, capitalism, which is the 1970s Friedman doctrine. And they, it already sort of acknowledged that externalities were a thing, but, <laughs> but uh, the explicit instruction was that uh, businessmen should not worry about externalities, just about profits. Um, well, that didn't make the negative externalities go away, um, but we know that externality, uh, negative externalities are a thing and we should be doing something about them, and I think there's this growing uh, recognition of that. So generally, when we talk about impact capitalism, um, um, it's not like a fully uh, flushed doctrine. I'm not pretending that, you know, I, and any of us, I don't think we're pretending we're like have it figured out at like a economics sort of uh, uh, a Nobel Prize uh, level, but we're saying that the, the organizing system seems to be good. Generally, we're like talking about the same principles of like supply, demand, human motivation, um, uh, being driven by greed and often self-interest. We're just trying to say that we can use those mechanisms and create those micro experiments and create um, 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 incentive structures that will use exactly the mechanisms of capitalism to drive the type of positive change we want. And it sounds, and, and I think uh, the, the, the carbon credits market are like one, and there's more examples, but like that's, a, that's, a, that's an example where like that seems to be working, that like we have created something where it, it sort of still feeds into the, like, the, the, the very typical capitalist engine, but it generates positive externalities, and, and there's more examples like that. So that's kind of the idea for today. Other speakers will explore, explore their experiments and their approaches. You know, ev most people are early, we're early. <laughs> this is a long-term vision. Um, yeah, it's possible to change the system and that's why we're here. So who am I? I'm an entrepreneur uh, with some successes and some failures on my account. I'm a fa founding partner of a venture fund called 50 Years. It's been, so this, is, this is kind of how, how I've been portrayed, and, but I see my, I'm also a burner uh, as, and a very phys phys uh, sorry, physical active person and that's kind of how I prefer to think of myself and I think uh, uh, I'm, I'm much more interested in, in sort of the, the um, uh, that sort of dynamic approach to life and, and, and I think there's a lot of um, creative energy that comes from that. So why 50 years? We'll just run through that, we don't have that much time. So, 50 Years is named after Winston Churchill's essay from 1931. Uh, it was called 50 Years Hence. And it, uh, you don't have to read the essay, although you should because it's amazing, but generally um, it, it, the, 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 the TLDR is we can extrapolate from today into the future. Scientists and technologies will have an outsized impact on how the world looks. Uh, he thought that in 1931 already, sort of beyond even politicians. And then the, the second part of the essay is pretty much talking about, like, with, uh, about the, the sort of responsibility that comes with, with, with power. And so our experiment is, uh, you know, we're, it's, it's sort of simple, and then I'll go to like, kind of the, the broader vision of it. So it's a precedency uh, VC firm, uh, started in 2016 by two Y Combinator alumni, an entrepreneur, myself, and said, stay right there. Uh, we, we started with a tiny fund of four, I mean, for a venture fund, it's tiny, or for a little over four million, essentially emptying our bank accounts and asking all the friends uh, from tech to give us the money. And then um, the, the, the other funds have, have your bigger and uh, have been bigger and we've grown the team and like we've, we've been at it for a few years right now. So our theory of change has been that um, uh, that we want to back impactful early stage founders. And then the question is why? So, you know, you can focus on many interventions when you're trying to drive change, but, you know, obviously it comes from cognitive bias of being a, t a startup, being startup founders, but startups t tend to be incredible vessels for change. They, um, they align incentives very well, there's equity sharing in the team, they, the, the, it's, it's sort of, the, the process of getting money is, re is relatively like streamlined right now in the startup uh, ecosystem. And generally startups have speed. So like we've all seen in the sort of, you know, non-impact world, a team that like starts very small and then within a few years sort of scales globally and has some impact. And then like why wouldn't that impact be positive? So one of the first lessons we learned, you know, two or three years into what we were doing is that um, deep tech um, is really where, uh, where we can have more impact. And specifically translation, which is the process of spinning out from academia and, and helping more companies um, in deep tech companies get established is like how we can actually drive more 
of the type of innovation we want. So, you know, some of those slides are long, so you can pause if you're looking at it online or it's going to be uploaded, so like, don't, don't worry too much about reading them, but generally speaking, um, these are the reasons why like deep tech is where we, where we should be looking. Um, um, you know, if we knew, you know, if there were easy solutions, the general, the, 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 the general assumption is like, if there were easy solutions to the big problems we all see and get frustrated by and suffer from, uh, it, those easy solutions would have been deployed. So like generally you have to like, develop something that hasn't existed before, you have to commercialize it, governments are bad at innovation, they, they can be better at distribution, you know, tech, tech entrepreneurship in deep tech is where a lot of positive change can come from. It's also uh, extremely impactful uh, to help those deep tech companies uh, uh, sort of spun out of academia and that's a messy process and, and, and we have been spending a lot of time on that. So um, uh, we also learn money is not enough as you know, the money is sort of abundant in the early stage uh, ecosystems like support is extremely important and the type of support we provide actually has been extremely uh, hopefully meaningful and we see you know that there's so much more we can do. So um, uh, you know why support is um, um, important because it's much harder to commercialize you know if you think of like novel therapeutics if you think of um, a, a, a new communication, new satellite communication stack, if you think of clean chemicals or like things that can sequester carbon from, from the atmosphere, like it's, it's not just sort of building what I've done before, B2B SaaS tool and like, you know, kind of, it's, it's, it's the, the level of complexity, it's much harder and the level of coordination and the funding stack you need to get, it's much, much harder. So those people just need, those founders need more support. And um, yeah, so we, um, early stage investors and like, like us and many other in this ecosystem can be extremely helpful. One thing we notice is extremely important to, 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 um, to identify the people who are mission aligned in the first place, because it's very easy to pivot when things get hard and things <laughs> get hard almost always. Uh, so generally speaking, when you think of like the Venn diagram of what we do, it's the big problems, um, um, billion or revenue potential, deep tech. So essentially, you know the 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 Mr. Burns uh, here is uh, is something that we um, that we use in this thing we call Mr. Burns test. It's like you know is would uh, it, for now the types of companies we back we want to make sure they sort of can um, um, they, they they pass this test, which is you know with a greedy sort of prototypical sort of capitalist of Mr. Burns. Um, driven only by his self-interest, um, uh, pick you know a company or, or a service because it's you know better, cheaper, and more convenient to him. So like we ultimately believe like there's some kickstarting and helping for uh, for those types of projects um, uh, and companies in the beginning, but like they will never scale uh, and have like the type of global impact that like we are all looking for um, if they don't have sort of a sustainable engine of of sort of revenue or or, or some sort of the, uh, so, some sort of commercial flywheel. So, uh, so yeah. In the current phase, we look a lot like a normal VC, and we, um, um, we seem to know what we're doing. I think after like five, or like six or seven years in, like I think we have a good grip on um, on on this, uh, and it's been a learning curve. Oh, but but the longer term vision, which is which is the which is really the, the exciting one, and that's what drives us, is to like how 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 do we take the learnings from what we're doing and like how do we scale it to move humanity to a better economic system and like here you know this is hard everyone here is trying to think about that we don't have all the answers we have some learnings and some um, uh, some experiments that we're designing so the four phases of 50 years there's still going to be a lot of text again pause on youtube and don't try to maybe jump through it the first phase which we're it's sort of behind us is the product market fit can we do this um, can we help is there a need for that and then what can we learn from, from this, essentially? So, and this is how we learn with deep tech can have more impact. This is why we decided with fund two and fund three to refocus on deep tech. Um, this is why we realized like, oh, there should be even more companies spinning out. Why aren't there more companies spinning out? Oh, there's like things we can do and we'll talk about it in a second. Um, and then supporting founders can be extremely impactful. So then phase two is scaling operations and then and focusing on deep tech. And we don't have to go through all the details, uh, but we've learned that like, this is the part when like we, like to really, you know, support the scale of what we're trying to do and um, um, we need to scale our operations and like there's been a lot of focus on that in the last, in the last two years, which I'll talk about in a second. And then there's a ton of um, the, 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 the sort of big levers, which sort of maybe s s sound simple, is, you know, is as much 
sort of access to uh, fundraising, operational support, but also storytelling um, uh, events uh, and, 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 and helping with communication. And then people, one of the biggest learnings as well is people get distracted with, uh, with, um, with easy money. Um, and, and in terms of how capitalism transitions to this more sort of um, uh, um, a positive impact phase is, is that we need to actually kind of recreate incentive designs. That like, if, if we don't find a way, you know, think carbon credits market, if we don't find some of those like loops and mechanisms, then um, I think it will be hard to have impact at scale. Um, and then so phase three, which we're sort of like in phase, phase, phase two, looking into phase three, is to, you know, develop scalable tools to, do, to, to identify and measure and support impact both for the early stage and like maybe looking also for the like slightly later stage, specifically tech entrepreneurship, that's what we're going to focus on. And then uh, help create markets and incentive structures. And this is where, you know, we're talking with, with protocol apps and like, this is how we're participating in those discussions because there's like things we, that can be done. And then obviously for everyone uh, in attending, I'm sure finding the comments, like phase four for, you know, many organizations would be to kind of merge this, uh, this, this, this approach with, with, with master branch. Which, um, um, of, of the global financial system. Uh, okay, so some experiments that uh, I will just run through because I have just a few minutes and you'll have to just bear with me. Uh, we run events uh, connecting investors, scientists, and repeat entrepreneurs to see if they can like start new companies and not in just you know gaming or um, uh, marketing uh, automation, but on things that are really important. Some areas uh, of events that we run. We run a translation podcast where we like we help scientists talk about um, uh, their um, um, papers and their work and the potential for translation. We try to like help sort of uncover some of the potential for translation there. We run programs for PhDs to help them understand the world of uh, um, um, investing, and we also run a community of 50/50, uh, which is uh, the community of the um, of um, um, uh, North, not right now North America's top 50 researchers to like. With, with this hypothesis that like community is often what's missing and also sort of getting them on the entrepreneurial path and that's been fairly successful in, in terms of like company creation actually and entrepreneurs spinning out. We're working on a spin out playbook which essentially we're saying, you know, it's so easy to start a Delaware company. It's so easy to like sign a safe, you know, and get some money in, you know, why combinators a safe as a, as a, as a financial a fundraising standard. Why is it, why there isn't there a standard to, for spinning out? And like why do people have to like negotiate and they don't know the terms, it's like asymmetry of negotiations. A lot of, like this, this, this could be massively impactful, very hard because there's many different systems, um, university systems and tech transfer offices, but you know, this is something we're very excited about for scaling this vision and for helping you know, um, much more innovation, uh, important innovation to happen. We had a failed experiment of, of, um, of a physical lab space in LA. Um, which we're going to repeat, uh, probably because it was mostly failed. It was because of the reasons why, why it failed. But like you know, there's there's been a bunch of different experiments of like what is needed for this ecosystem. How can we ecosystem for how can we enable more change? So some of the results we backed. You know, 44 PhD founders and we have tw 22 um, uh, PhD CEOs. These are like just from our founder community. This is like kind of the caliber of the people we're talking about. Some of them are really incredible. Um, um, we have a Nobel Prize winning co-founder. So we've backed some of these amazing companies. These are some um, numbers over here of, you know, fun, fun to, um, 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 of, um, uh, right now we backed over 99 companies. <laughs> the next company we'll end up partnering with will be the 100th companies, over 200 founders. Uh, we have multiple deep tech unicorns in the sort of clean, uh, um, um, clean chemical space and, and, and um, uh, satellite connectivity space and in like and, and, and many other um, areas. There's reputation flywheels which we're already experiencing when it's easier for us to attract the type of people we're interested in. We have amazing investors who are actually really, you know, 44 founders of billion dollar tech companies have backed us so we're we like to say we're like this like founders all the way down so it's um it's you know it's been working in many ways um protocol apps team asked me to like talk about why uh, which public goods this approach is good or uh, bad for and actually like just going through like the types of public goods i think whether directly or indirectly it can be pretty much good for anything just because 
pretty much anything that the governments do has to come from somewhere. Governments do not do tech development. So like when we kind of acknowledge that they have to buy it from somewhere and pay it for, it, 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 and, and including the, the even like democracy itself, which relies on you know the independent press and 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 sort of ad free press. When you think of Substack, this is really their vision. It can be it can be used for anything. Um, um, so yeah, we have some unsolved problems. Um, for example, uh, we're still trying to uncover how to commercialize even more scientific research um, and um, and make it easier for uh, for um, um, for people to spin out. Um, you know, as I mentioned that already, that we have the, 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 the Delaware C Corp standard of starting a company where it's pretty much like you don't have to get lawyers involved to get your incorporation documents um, um, done. And like, yes, everybody thinks, yeah, of course we don't. But like at some point that was not the case and that was like much more painful. And now we can use like Stripe Atlas and, and some of those tools. And then the, the innovation of um, first the, the VCA sort of funding pay, um, uh, documents and then the say, why, why Combinator is safe created a standard for like what a protocol for um, f uh, uh, fundraising uh, is. And like, you know, right now it's not uncommon that, if, you know, we talk to a founder, we have a handshake, we confirm it over email, they send us a safe, we wire, the, we wire the money within an hour, right? How much easier is that? And like how much more, like, you know, A, they get the money, which is obviously extremely important. And then it just like, they, they don't have to run the like cycles of like who do I talk to, who's the lawyers, and then like you know, negotiating, like all that BS that like nobody really wants. That does not exist for tax transfers. So, like, if we could have that, you know, this is one of the big things that like if any of you have been thinking of, and if any of you watching that talk have been thinking of, like this is we should talk about that because we're, we're trying to. Uh, yeah, we, we really want to solve that. Um, uh, you know, the other uh, challenges is definitely like in terms of liquid returns, um, uh, they take a long time. So it's, you know, it's like harder to have a massive, massive um, operations team, which again, drives operational efficiency and like productization of some of, some of what we're doing. But like definitely that's like, you know, if, if we're talking about like, what are some of the unsolved approaches to this, that's, that's, um, that's definitely the um, uh, things that's on, on our mind. And um, yeah, it's, we would love to see, yeah, the, the, you know, we have seen and we have inspired other firms to do this. And this is really our goal. Like, if you want to start a venture fund, start doing exactly what you're doing. Please do. We can help you. <laughs> um, um, there needs to be so many more sort of local firms uh, uh, focus on different areas of tech, deep tech and specializing and, and sort of having, like, this ethos um, and, and hopefully helping, like, solve important problems through that or at least creating the pipeline of innovation that then could be distributed to solve some of the problems. And yeah, we're excited about the imp some of the talks today about impact certificates because this definitely, you know, we see some of the, like we see already that there is going to be, you know, for, for the, all the, all the um, uh, climate tech companies that we've backed, and we've backed quite a few, like they will be able to use, um, um, you know, right now they're in like the technology uh, validation assessment stage. Some of those companies are generating revenue, but it takes time to get certified. Um, so, but hopefully that can be brought um, um, into the present. But in, in other areas of sort of positive impact, there isn't a way to um, essentially get additional um, revenue or credibility, um, um, yeah, so I think the impact certificate work could be extremely impactful. So anyone working on impact certificate work, I mean, I, I know some of you, <laughs> some of you uh, but if, um, uh, also talk to us, like how this could be, how this could be um, uh, used in an early stage um, ecosystem. Yeah, and I think this is kind of all I have. I'm very, uh, I, sorry, I sprinted through it, but this is kind of the time I have. Thank you so much. If, uh, <laughs>